Welcome back to Intelligent Medicine. Today's broadcast is all about Radiation Nation. It's a new book. Well, it's a book that's been out for a little while. Uh, Daniel T. Debon is the author, along with uh, Ryan Debon, uh, who I presume is your son, Ryan? Yes, he is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they collaborated on uh, a book that is, quote, your complete guide to EMF protection. Uh, subtitled The Proven Health Risk of EMF Radiation Emissions and What You Can Do to Protect Yourself and Family. And so you were about to tell us uh, an anecdote about um, the telecommunications industry. Um, uh, yes. Um, there is a, a consortium uh, a represented at the, um, uh, the national level that represents the service providers, and it's been around for 30 years, 40 years. The head of that was um, a, an individual that um, hired uh, a physician to evaluate any linkage between cancer and cell phone. Um, the the physician came back, world-renowned physician. I don't want to use names, but he 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 concluded that there was a linkage, and then the, the head of that ended up. Um, uh, destroying the man's career, Whoa. Uh, literally, because it was a negative message being sent. That man was Wheeler. Wheeler was the head mm -hmm. of the FCC for the last five, ten years. Oh boy, he was. So, yeah. so th th there is. So this is like I'm a government industrial uh, complex that right, is uh, right, exactly. keeping this information suppressed. And, and what I found was in the science community. Um, there, there's a lot. In fact, you know, it's funny. I go back to my Bell Labs days, and and I used to look at the, uh, the significance of data. And as you may know, to be six, plus or minus five uh, percent uh, accurate in what you do, and you and you feel accurate that it's true. Uh, there's certain populations that you got to look for uh, to, to to draw conclusions on. And what I found was. Um, a lot of stuff existed. In fact, the way I saw it was I've found a preponderance of evidence. It's not all in the same place. So my goal was simply make it available to so you can see for yourself if you think it's legitimate or not. I'm not trying to influence you one way or the other, but what I know for sure is there's clear and evident um, um, data that, that, that identifies potential harms for the body. Indeed. So uh, let's get to solutions. You know, how can we mitigate the problem? And and uh, and full disclosure here, you also are the developer of uh, a product or a product line uh, that attempts to tamp down some of the dangers. Yeah, it's funny. Um, you know, going back to the story of how I got involved, um, there were products that talked about the extremely low frequency shielding, but not the RF shielding. And oftentimes I'd find that those who were producing these didn't even know that one or the other existed, or even both for that matter. So I actually um, have developed a product lines that shields the body. It's simple. It's not complicated. Mm -hmm. We simply stop the signal from entering the body. And now here's the other thing. You don't need to buy any of my products if you're smart. The reality of it is you've heard me talk about time and distance, right? So if if you have a signal against your head, a cell phone against your head, that is the most dangerous. It's a 1.6 watts per kilogram signal entering into the brain. And so that's when it's most a, a danger. If you take it one foot away, 80% of the danger is gone by 4 foot 98. That is the strength of the amplitude of the signal is uh, not going to be damaging to the cells of the body when you start moving it in the distance. So when you're sitting by a Wi-Fi, make sure it's at least four foot away. I typically recommend 10. Mm -hmm. But distance is your friend. Just stay away. And the other, so we can shield. You can uh, distance yourself from the, from the uh, signal. Or you can reduce the durations of time you're using these things. You know, we were talking about if, 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 if in, in the medical community they're using electromagnetic radiation 
so long as it's not on for several hours a day, which they're typically only minutes, by the way, mm -hmm. you're pretty safe. So yeah. durations are the other thing you need to be concerned about. Right. So, um, so a, a concern, it, it's simple a, metric. A concern that I have, and, and I've been sort of a, a Luddite about this, a, a, like a, not an early adopter, is um, Bluetooth headsets, um, you know, where it's tempting to ditch the wire, lose the wire, and uh, buy one of these uh, Bluetooth headsets. And I, you know, I see people jogging with them. Um, you know, sometimes it's a hassle having a wire leading from your uh, iPod to your to your um, uh, headset when you're jogging or when you're exercising. So you're tempted to get Bluetooth. There's a great new uh, Bluetooth Apple uh, earlets uh, that are, you know, supposedly the sound is killer. And um, and and so it is it really important to avoid using those devices or um, can they be used for short durations with uh, safety? Uh, uh, Dr. Arnold, he here's some metrics that you may want to use to make those choices yourself. Yeah. Um, wh when you use a cell phone and it connects to a cell tower, that, that strength of the signal can get you almost five miles. Hmm. When you use a Wi-Fi w with your cell phone, it can go about 500 feet, three to 500 feet, mm -hmm. depending. Uh, on uh, and if you use a Bluetooth, it can go on uh, about thirty to fifty feet, depending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the energy levels of all of those three differ. Yeah. However, they're all an RF signal between the one and two gigahertz space. Mm -hmm. So when I talked about duration, if you're looking to put your Bluetooth headset on and you're going to use it hours at a time. I, I certainly wouldn't recommend it, and it's because it's convenient, but mm -hmm. it's also penetrating the brain. Yeah. The younger you are, the more likely is true. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to have cancer. That doesn't mean you're going to get a tumor. That doesn't mean you're even going to have a headache. Yeah. But there is no doubt there's penetration of that signal into the, the skull. The younger you are, the worse it is. And if you use just a wired, so for example, as we do this, record this uh, podcast, uh, I'm sitting here with a headset, but it's a wired headset, and there's little amplifiers in there, and they're right next to my ears. And I've been doing, I've been broadcasting for 30 or 35 years, and I do, you know, probably on on an average, you know, four, five, six hours of broadcasting per week. Um, does that pose a hazard? It does. The magnitude of the of the hazard is low. Okay. Because I'm using a wired, um, you, you a wanna, wired uh, head headphones. Right. The the worst thing you can have is put it against your head. Yeah, um, that's, the the that's much what it is. better solution. That's what it is. <laughs> the much the much better solution is to use a pair of wired headsets like you're using. Mm -hmm, okay. Even better than that is don't have a, those wires exposed to your your brain at all. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, acoustical coupling um, uh, um, kinds of earbuds okay. that prevent the wire, uh, the uh, electrical, extremely low frequency stuff coming out of the wiring. Mm. But if you're doing it for long durations, I would recommend not uh, doing that and seeing to find, um, uh, you know, an uh, air, uh, air tube kind of arrangements to reduce those exposures. Um, they uh, they uh, can um, impact, as I said before, as as much as an RF, any other RF signal. Right. So I'm actually at your website now. I went to DefenderShield.com, and you have a product here. Is this what you're talking about? It's yeah. EM, EMF radiation-free yeah. air tube stereo headphones earbuds. Um, right. And That's why I developed them. Okay. So... I'll I'll take a pair of those. <laughs> here's my <laughs> right. here's my credit card number. There's only a few thousand people listening, and probably all of them are honest, so they're not. Gonna, no, we'll talk after the show. Okay, so uh, so let's talk about some of the products that are available at DefenderShield.com because for the lady who has uh, you know who, who loves to sit for hours on end doing her correspondence, you know, uh, surfing the internet uh, with her laptop on her lap. I mean, that's why they call them laptops. What do you have? We have a, a Defender pad. It's literally uh, a surface, 10 by 15 surface, where you can put your computer on top 
and it can still connect to the Wi-Fi, but all the downward um, emissions that are dangerous to the groin area are shielded, so there's no mm-hmm. emissions touching the inner part. And by the way, it's not just the male that, that you worry about. Mm-hmm. It's the female. There was a oh, study yeah. done. It was a, what do they call it, a, a metadata study. Where they, where, they, where they looked at, uh, out of Italy, they, they looked at like 20,000 women uh, exposed to emissions. And what we found was there was a 2% um, incident of tumor, of which a small percentage of that went cancerous in the womb. Wow. So it's serious wow. stuff. Yeah. Uh, if, if we knew, um, we know 15 years, 20 years, that a low-level... I, what I haven't said is how do you measure these kinds of things? Well, well, the extremely low frequency stuff you measure in Gauss. Mm-hmm. Um, 10 Gauss is really low. 100 Gauss is a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And um, the um, a, a pregnant woman exposed to an RF signal over, uh, excuse me, an ELF signal uh, over extended period of times uh, can actually have a miscarriage three times more than a normal woman Mm. if she's pregnant. Mm. So we know it it, it impacts. Um, But let's go back to how do you, uh, how do you deal with these things in your environment? Okay. I like to talk about it as bees in the room. Think, think of it as one bee won't kill you. So if you have a cell phone and it's more than four foot away, I wouldn't panic. Mm-hmm. I, I would put it on the, on the, on on the table and not worry yeah. about it. Yeah, dock it, it, it away it, from it, you it, and, or outside the room, you know, to charge overnight. Right. And, yeah, but you know, right, there, unfortunately, right. there are people who literally sleep with their cell phone right beside them because they're afraid that they'll miss a text or a phone call. And the, I mean, they're I, nuts. It, it, yeah, and they're nuts. Be, and that, but that's it, unfortunately the world we live in is everybody's connected, and yeah. especially kids and teenagers are doing this. And at the very least, they're becoming sleep deprived because of that. But think yeah. of the consequences of the because EMFs of the coming off that. Yeah. 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 It kills, it kills what, your melatonin it's, it's production in your pine needle. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and that's exactly what's going on. Mm-hmm. And, and and so if you have a thousand bees in the room, a thousand bees can kill you. Mm-hmm. Think of it in that way. So think about every transmitting source in your house, in your room, and try to reduce them. Mm-hmm. Try to turn them off when you don't need them. At, at night, turn off your Wi-Fi, for yeah. example. Yeah. Uh, you don't need it on. You're not using it. Yeah. It's uh, propagating through their house. Mm-hmm. If, if it's on the, against the wall of your bedroom wall uh, on the other side, mm. that's a couple of feet away. What are you, crazy? Yeah. You want to make sh- sure that you regiment your life and minimize the bees in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, but, if you're, uh, but if you're using it during the day, as, as you, you were asking me before about uh, the, how do you do the laptop, um, uh, that we have the defender pit that does that. And then the head, we have a, a Defender Shield product line, uh, which is literally shielding the, uh, the the in between the cell phone itself and the body. Mm-hmm. So if you have it in your pocket, guess guess what? You uh-huh. know, if, uh, I'm going to depart from for, for a story. I don't know if you looked at the USA Today. They had a couple of uh, they had an article about. The reason why the male sperm count is yeah. being reduced hmm. is because they're using laptops in their lap. Yeah. You missed the boat. You exactly. missed the boat completely. Exactly. It's where the is... RF signal. Right. It's, you know. And, but also, where do you stick your cell it's phone? The... You know, in, a, in your front pant pocket. Yeah, yeah. think of that. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. if you stick it in, if you you stick it in, in your, your rear pants. pocket, somebody's going to pick your pocket, so you're going to put it in the front pocket. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's literally true. You have microwaves. Oh, by the way, I, I didn't say this, I don't think, clearly. Mm-hmm. An RF signal is a microwave signal. Okay. It's one and the same. There's no difference whatsoever. It's just a nif- nif- nomenclature. Okay. So they're the same thing. So think about putting a microwave oven in your pocket. Well, That's the, what they're doing. Also, I mean, strategically, so, it's the, one of the reasons we know mm-hmm. is why do, why do uh, males have external genitals Instead of internal genitals mm-hmm. like women, and the reason is because uh, one very efficient means of birth control, and the Japanese practice it is to sit in a very hot bath before intercourse, because your right. testicles right. need to be a little cooler than body temperature for optimal sperm activity. 
And yeah, so, right, exactly. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you a, a, an opposing story. I had a, a business associate that was in the uh, 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 he was in the army in in Vietnam, and what they used to do is take the um, their, the, their Wi-Fi transmitters and they would uh, saturate their groin so they wouldn't have any active sperm. <laughs> okay, that's a that's, for, that's <laughs> was, a form of birth was, control. So it yeah. does affect your body. <laughs> yeah. On that note, let's let's yeah, pause for a moment for uh, a commercial because uh, one of our uh, sponsors wants to share a message with our listeners. So here goes. This episode of Intelligent Medicine is brought to you by Carlson Fish Oils. Fish oil provides the vital omega-3s, EPA and DHA, which support cardiovascular, brain and nerve, vision, immune system, joint and skin health. Carlson ensures maximum freshness by managing their fish oils from sea to shelf. All Carlson fish oils are tested by an FDA-registered laboratory for freshness, potency, and purity, and they're available in soft gels and liquid form. For more information, go to carlsonlabs.com. Carlson fish oils are available at fine health food stores nationwide. Okay, folks, thanks for listening, and thanks for supporting our sponsors. They're what make these podcasts possible. So back to our guest. He's uh, Daniel DeBon. His book is Radiation Nation. And it's a great compendium of information about the hazards of EMFs and what you can do to mitigate them. Uh, Again, at DefenderShield.com, I see a variety of products. Some are for shielding laptops. uh, Some are for shielding uh, tablets and iPads. uh, Some of them are for shielding phones. Um, If you have a kid who has a phone, that's probably not the greatest idea anyway. But if you have a kid who has a phone, good idea to get him a shield. There's, there's no doubt. And as I said before, the standard allows a child to have an exposure where the signal goes completely through their head. And think about this. That's a lifetime of exposure. What's the biological impact of that? Mm-hmm. No one knows. Yeah. Because you know, we'll, 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 know, we'll about, know in like 40 or 50 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's funny. There are some experts, science um, experts that that talk about impacts to the egg of a uh, of a teenage girl, hmm. and th- they th- there is evidence that uh, what we know is there's can be DNA damage. We haven't yeah. talked about the details of that stuff. We, but we know that all your, your eggs are present at uh, you know right. certain, at, in childhood and in puberty. Right. Uh, they just need to develop, and the egg that may make a baby when you're 32 uh, was present when you were uh, 14. So, yeah, uh, and and you and you take your your cell phone and you put it in your pocket every day as a twelve year old. Mm-hmm. So you're exposing that egg that is your lifetime uh, um, nest of eggs. Yeah, and so there are some experts that believe the the catastrophic events are in the future in subtending re- re- generations that there's DNA damage that occurs to the uh, to this to the egg. And then you have subtending generations that are now carrying the um, mutated cell. Um, and, and so there are some, I don't necessarily believe that because I'm not sure there's any evidence for that. But some postulate that that's true. Well, I, I must admit, I was relieved to see when I went to DefenderShield.com uh, that I didn't see one of those little uh, metallic pendants that you throw around your neck that has some kind of uh, insignia or emblem on it. Uh, that's supposed to somehow mysteriously shield you from all misfortune. I've seen those uh, on sale. What do you think of some of the devices that are out there uh, that uh, purport to shield people from radiation? Uh, do you think that uh, they're as scientifically based as your devices? No, not at all. In fact, that's who, the reason why I got into this business, because I had a science background. I ran laboratories based on science and evidence of science. Mm-hmm. And, and then uh, I, I came into this industry and I started seeing these claims about um, harnessing RF signals with, with a rock, with, with a processor, with, uh, and absolutely no unbiased independent uh, evaluation from uh, the scientific community about the, the accuracy of the claims. Very few do. I recommend truly... Please look for evidence that is independent and clear. And don't look for indirect evidence. As you may know, uh, 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 that, that 
when when you have a, 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 a RF signal touching your body tight, it changes the red blood cell count. Mm -hmm. And 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 so um, they these people claim that when you have our device, you won't see red blood cell count. Uh, ch ch uh, change um, from a normal uh, to, for, to an abnormal case. Uh, to, uh, that's indirect study. It's not mm -hmm. an impact to a, to a cell. Mm -hmm. you, you, so a lot, a lot of these say they're uh, medically proven to work. Mm -hmm. They're not proven to shield you. They're not proven to protect you. There may be some indirect laboratory work that said uh, we didn't see any blood cell change. And that's not evidence that your cell is being protected and not being influenced uh, to the point where there's oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is what happens. And by the way, oxidative stress, and I talk to um, um, uh, 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 biochemists often about, about this subject matter, uh, and the, uh, the oxidative stress um, is... A cell is a cell, and any time it's impacted by its environment, it, it, it goes into a, a state of trying to protect itself under a weakened state. What happens when it goes weakened? The proteins that pass between one cell to the other to keep them happy can't pass through. And what happens to that? People who now say, every time I get close to a cell phone, I, my head hurts. Every time I get close to a phone, my, my ears hurt. What are they actually saying? What they're saying is they're electromagnetic hypersensitive and the cells have weakened to the extent where it's more long term now. And so there is really a, 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 a evidence that electromagnetic hypersensitivity is actually increasing. Hmm. Um, and it's because of the direct correlation, in my opinion. Uh, to the toxin that's the R RF that we're exposed to. And, and finally, what about people who live close to cell phone towers? Because it's that's one of those sort of NIMBY issues, you know, not in my backyard. You know, I'd love to, I'd love getting a great cell phone service in my neighborhood, but I won't accede to having an ugly cell phone tower uh, that spoils my view. But is it a, of concern if uh, they erect a cell phone uh -huh. tower on your roof, for example, uh, you know, because your landlord wants to make a little extra dough? There's no doubt whatsoever that in uh, in the in the, uh, the world of war, RF signals are used as a weapon. Mm -hmm. And what they know is if they have the amplitude of the signal strong enough, durations long enough, these are the kind of impacts to the body that will be created. And incidentally, and, and there was so, just an episode of this because the uh, the diplomatic corps from Havana had to be evacuated uh, back to the mainland. And I'm not sure if this is uh, EMFs, but they directed some very high frequency uh, sound waves at the uh, embassies, uh, the consulates down there, and yeah. uh, it caused uh, uh, hearing damage serious enough to have to require that these diplomats be evacuated. Yeah, this has been this has been going on for the last twenty years. It's it part the of Russians did it to um, uh, to our diplomats right. in Moscow, right? Yeah, they know they can cause leukemia with the right amplitude and right duration. Wow, it, it's a, a a pretty well understood science in in the warring space. Wow. My point is, long durations are dangerous. So when you're close and the distances are close, that's not a good thing, and some argue, by the way, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, we haven't spoke about 5G. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of the technology space is always trying to improve um, yeah. um, the uh, bandwidth. 3G, uh, so 4G, they can have 5G. More data. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. 4G is, um, is a signal that is a digital signal. And here's a little bit of detail. A digital signal is a pulsing on and off signal. So it's more damaging to the cell than a, um, a analog signal. Why? If I take um, a, 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 a iron bar and I put a 10,000-pound uh, load on it on a piece of a concrete and I keep it a constant load, that concrete won't break. Mm -hmm. If I lift it up and if I push it down, 
it becomes a jackhammer and yeah. it breaks right away. Yeah. So there's a different physics associated with current transmissions that are hitting our body. From 4G to 5G, it now becomes a case where um, they call it MIMO, multiple in, multiple out. It's not just a pulsing digital signal. It's multiple pulsing digital signals. And the frequencies are 10 times to 20 times higher than the current frequencies. Wow. And the FCC just allowed that to be done. And in fact, you know, we talked about local municipalities. There's actions by the federal government actually to not require approvals of those transmitters in those communities. A cell tower can be five miles away and work. These can only be, they have to be less than a mile away. Mm. So a half a mile typical. Wow. So you're going to have more bees in your environment that potentially are more harmful. Wow. All right. Much more detail on this subject uh, in the book, Radiation Nation. Uh, I recommend it very highly. Uh, and it's available from the usual sources. And you can also get it from the website. Uh, what is that again, please? Uh, that's DefenderPad.com. Uh, DefenderShield.com. Shield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, DefenderShield.com. Uh, or you can get the book at uh, RadiationNationBook.com. And I presume all the other usual sources. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, uh, you can get it from, uh, we were number one in, um, in, in, in Amazon uh, for a while. Uh, it's pretty, uh, there's a lot of, been a lot of interest, uh, which I'm very excited about because our whole goal was to try to help people understand the environment they're living in. And I didn't write it for you, by the way. I wrote it for your mother, your, your, your daughter. <laughs> yeah, no. You, you know what I mean? It was no, it's really very, it's important that we. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want to try to get it so it's understandable and not over the heads of those who are reading it so they can decide what they want to do in their environment and deal with uh, that in their lives the way they choose to do it. Well, it, it's excellent. Practical suggestions, uh, good science, and, and I. I have to say, this is a concern that's so, so often ignored. You know, we care about uh, the quality of our food, our water, our air, uh, and yet this is uh, an invisible source of pollution uh, that's very real and that I think we have to come to grips with uh, in some way uh, before major health problems emerge. And it's going to be subtle it's because, like, what's causing uh, these epidemics of serious uh, life-threatening diseases, but also, you know, sort of... Uh, annoying uh, health problems, not uh, health problems that kill people, but uh, fatigue, headaches, malaise, uh, mood problems. Uh, are they all related to EMFs? Well, who knows? Because it's such a it's such a composite. Our environment is so complicated. But I thank you for shedding light on on the subject. Uh, good stuff. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. I'm Dr. Ronald Hoffman, and this is the Intelligent Medicine Podcast.